Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Make Our World Your Runway. You know it's lights, camera, action. And, of course, we always have the most fascinating individuals that we interview every week from the world of modeling, pageantry, business, beauty, fashion, and even the entertainment industry. And you are going to love my special guest here today in the studio. He's absolutely amazing. But, of course, we always have a few announcements that we do like to make. But before I make my announcements, I do want to do a special tribute Okay, because of all of you know, this show is produced by the Global Trade Chamber and to the president of the Global Trade Chamber, Al Otero. Al, a big shout out and a happy birthday. And a little bit about Al is when I first came to uh, South Florida many years ago and I wanted to start the Miss Latina International Pageant, I think he looked at me with two heads. But then he said, you know what, this is a great idea. He was one of the founders with me of Miss Latina International. He helped me get a scholarship program for a lot of women that wanted to go to college but just couldn't afford it. And then we did so well with the Latin market that we involved into Miss International World. So Al, thank you so much. Happy birthday. Enjoy your day and feel better, most important. But like I said, as always, we have an exciting guest. But we do want to tell you to remember to subscribe to the Global Trade Chamber YouTube channel so that you can see all the shows from Make Our World Your Runway and Success Stories. And we also want to tell our viewers to highly tune in to Success Stories because this show features the most fascinating women in the world of business and community service. From humble beginnings to successful entrepreneurs, these women will totally inspire you. And of course, we do want to thank the sponsors that make this show possible, and that is Lasky Architect, Lux Salon, Margaritaville at Sea, the Global Trade Chamber, 100 Successful Women in Business, the Transmedia Group, the Bangladesh American Chamber of Commerce, SP Fashion Direct, and Vita Designs and Entertainment. So thank you, sponsors, for believing in us and making this show possible. And for Las Vegas, make sure you nominate yourself or your colleague for the 2024 Reception Award Ceremony. There's going to be networking, conferences, business expo, fashion show, and Make Our World Your Runway is going to go live. So for all this information, please visit the website at www.100swb.com for all the information on Las Vegas and many of the shows coming up in 2025. And I want to remind everyone to sign up as soon as possible because these shows are always a total sellout. Once again, the website, www.100swb.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, lights, camera, action. It's on to our show, Make Our World Your Runway. And as I said before, we have an amazing and a very interesting guest. And I'm going to just read a little bit about his bio. I think he's a little bit like me, <laughs> okay? Uh, we've all had some crazy things in our background, and I want to say he was a graffiti ar artist. He said he was turned a uh, gang member, and he was possibly facing a sentence, but he transitioned from a blue-collar industry to a white-collar, becoming an entrepreneur in art and fashion. His work has been featured in prestigious art galleries in South Florida, several independent films, and some TV shows, and his designs have been featured on runways of Miami Swim Week, Palm Beach Swim Week, Orlando, and Chicago Wicker Park Fest. So he definitely has an amazing story. His real name is Kenny Ruiz, but you probably know him on social media as Mag Chop Kenny. So once again, Kenny, welcome to Make Our World Your Runway. Thank you, Thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Now you have a real interesting background. Oh yeah, I've been a little bit a part of everything. <laughs> from growing up in Chicago to moving to Florida, just to transition from there and then my, my whole life just starting over. It's been a pretty wild ride. Exactly, it is a wild ride. And you know, when you said that uh, you became a gang member, I think uh, a lot of us from that New York area, Chicago, yeah. somehow or another got involved with that. Whether we did or we didn't want to, right. it's just the areas that we came from, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was, uh, New Jersey born and raised. Okay. I was raised in Hackensack, New Jersey, and we were realistically only 20 minutes from New York City. All we had to yeah. do was get on Route 80, Fort Lee was there, cross over to George Washington Bridge, and there you are. Mm -hmm. So it was a whole world, okay? And you know, when you're young and you're growing up, you kind of tend sometimes to believe things that maybe are true but aren't true. Right. And everybody's kind of reaching for the stars, so you get involved with things that you're not doing it intentionally, but you just 
kind of snowball into it. Yeah, you find yourself in the middle of that situation, you know, being a graffiti artist, running the streets of Chicago at such a young age. And then, you know, you find yourself as you're getting older, some of your friends are turning, you know, turning towards the gang life. You know, for me, it wasn't something that I wanted to do. I found myself in a situation where right. I kind of had to join. And so I joined and so I did just enough to keep myself safe, to keep myself, you know, with the with the record. But I was really an artist at heart. So yes. doing graffiti was where I wanted to be. I wanted to be in the subways. I wanted to be on the buses, <laughs> you know, you know, the walls at night. That was my that was my paradise. <laughs> exactly. And, and you want to know something? That was a great paradise to be in. Yeah. And, you know, like we say, Chicago, L.A., the streets yeah. of L.A., even Philly, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But New York City was wild, and, and as I was saying before, you know, I come back from that era of the Copacabana. Yeah. So, you know, how do you get a, you get associated with, you know, the Frank Sinatras and all that type of people, and once you're involved with, let's say, that kind of industry, the entertainment industry, it, it just it, it just becomes part of you. It you does. It, it really does. All right. I mean, you'll be at a party and you're meeting 50 million people, and before you know it, you're involved with this one and that <laughs> one. Yes. And you know, you're you're trying to get your career going, but unfortunately, you have to hobnob or rub shoulders with people that are in that industry. Okay? You got to network. I mean, I I tell people all the time, and I've. You know, my kids are really good in school, and I tell them, get your degrees. I want you to get a degree, but I also teach them how to network because I tell them networking can open doors, degrees can't. And, mm -hmm. and I'm living proof of that with everything that I've accomplished. You know, having my artwork in the Miami Supercar Rooms exhibited. Right. Uh, I've been in the Red Gallery and the Spectrum during Art Basel, which are very, very prestigious galleries. And right now my artwork is being... Is being uh, displayed at the downtown Fort Lauderdale in the Chamber of Commerce building. I did see that. Yes, there. I did see that. Yeah, so I said, oh, my God. I said, I know who that is. I said, <laughs> it, uh, it's amazing. In fact, um, she owns an art gallery. Brooke Trace talks about you all the time. Oh, yeah, I know Brooke. She's great. She's oh, at the she, Nobi Gallery. Yes. She's amazing, yeah. Yes. We need to do another cocktail party with her. She's going through a little bit of a transition right now. There's an art show coming up, and it's on the other street, and mm. uh, there's some things going on, so I'm trying to help her. But if we can do something with her, she, she does. She gives you A-plus credit all the time. That's Every time awesome. I go in there, she said, have you seen Kenny? She talks about you, so she She's totally She's always it. treated me well. I did a, a show with her one time. Yes. It was great. It was a great turnout. She's an amazing person. It's really nice to be able to. And, and that gallery is actually very well known. The Nobi Gallery is really known oh, in that Nobi Fort Lauderdale area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. North yeah. Beach Art Gallery, very well mm -hmm. known. She did the artwork for Winterfest at one yes. time. Uh, she's done artwork for several people. I know I've done a few fundraisers with her, and, and there's a lot of people that love and respect her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm one of them. <laughs> a yeah, lot of love for her. A lot of respect I, I for love her. her. I mean, she's very talented. I think that um, there were a couple of people that, you know, were maybe a little jealous of her and tried to take her down, and that happens in this industry. In this industry, well, it does happen <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> it, it, it does happen. And you know, but unfortunately, you're going to get that in every industry. Yeah, no matter where you're at. I mean, if you come into a company and you're too ambitious, the employees that are kind of been like laxadaising it up are like, hey, hey, whoa, you're making us look bad. Exactly. So it, can, it could happen anywhere. It, exactly. And, you know, it's funny because my cousin and I were talking about that the other day. My cousin Anthony, who he does his own music, but he's got a great Elvis act. In, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, for the last three years, he's been number one on the Rockabilly station. Oh, wow. Okay. okay? And we, he would, every Friday, or every Thursday, I should say, he dedicates a song uh, to some of his fans. And he says, tell me what you'd like to hear. And he comes from his house. And I always loved that. I know he, with his Elvis act, I always loved that song, If I Can Dream, that Elvis did. That was a great song. And a lot of people don't realize Elvis Presley really had some ballad voice. Yes. He was amazing. So yesterday, my cousin decides to dedicate that song to me on social media, and he sang it to me yesterday morning. Oh, wow. And I called him up. I said, you know, you just made my day. And he and I were talking, and he says, you know, he said, you remember when we first started out? And I said, it's true. And I was telling the girls that. I said, back then, we had telethons that we <laughs> could go and perform at. We didn't get paid, but we knew all the big stars were there. Mm -hmm. So we figured, okay, let's go. We never know what's going to happen. Right. So, and it was true. You know, I wound up performing on the Jerry Lewis telethon and meeting Jerry wow. Lewis. My cousin, same thing, you know, with his Elvis act and everything. And the one, and I, 
I think a lot of people have heard the story. One of the telethons that I was performing for, the Easter Seals telethon, they changed my time. And I said, well, nobody's going to hear me at that time of night. You know, I'm on the East Coast here. Mm. And I was wondering why they said to me, come in at midnight. They said, well, we're going nationwide because now California oh. was going to be 9 o'clock. Oh, so I wow. get in there, and I don't know if you remember the disc jockey, uh, Cousin Bruce Morrow. Yes, yes, okay. yeah. He's heading up, okay, the telethon there. This was at Rutgers University. And he said to me, okay, you're going on first. I said, no problem. He said, and you're going to open up for Frankie Valley." <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I said, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons? He said, yeah. He said, they're coming from California. But wow. They're going to, you know, zoom it in. He says, and uh, they didn't call it zoom at that time. He says, we're going to patch it in. He says, and but you're their opening act. I said, wait a minute. You got somebody else in here that wants to do this? I said, Frankie Valley. <laughs> I said, there's no way. He yeah. said to me, no, you're it. He said, after what we've heard, you're in it. I said, I don't believe wow. This. So I'm in the back, and I'm sh <laughs> shaking, sweating. I'm yeah. sweating. And I said to my cousin, I said, I'm, I said, do you want to open up for me? He says, guess what? He said, the second half, I'm opening up for him. I said, oh, Jesus. I think, oh. Wow. So I went out, and I did my thing. Frankie Valley did not want to go on after me. He said, let her keep going. <laughs> He's like, I like what I'm seeing here. <laughs> I was doing this. When I got done, I said, that was it. But, you know, just to get that opportunity. Yeah. Okay? And then then, then when they came back again, my cousin opened up for him. So we both opened up for Frankie Vaughn. But imagine walking in a place and not knowing you're going to open up for a big star. It's and you like, know what? That right there is such a testament. I, I, I love that story because... You had to take the initiative of going to a place where you weren't sure exactly what you were going to do, how it was going to work out, but you put yourself in there, the opportunity opened, and boom, you walked right through the door. And I, I'm such an advocate for that. Like, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Go do the things that you think aren't going to work because let me tell you, you never know what's going to come out of it. And I preach that all the time to my fans, friends, and kids. <laughs> yeah. And look at all the things that you've done, okay? Yes. I mean, you were a designer, a painter, a... Radio personality Radio actor. Radio personality, movie actor. <laughs> yes. I mean, when I saw that Rise of the Hustler. Hi, Christopher. We're going to plug you today <laughs> hey, again. Hey, Chris. Yeah, yes. exactly. Hey, Chris. Uh, I mean, it was it was great. I saw that come up, and I said, whoa. I said, these these guys are really doing things. Yeah, it, he, it's, been a, it's been a journey because, let me tell you, I originally didn't start, like, wanting to be an actor. I was trying to put my art out there, and then I was like, oh, what can I do to get the artwork to sell? Because being an artist, you're selling your, you're selling your soul <laughs> in, this you thing, are. in this piece of, you know, because or an original. It, you're selling your emotions. This is who you are. And so I wanted to present it in a different way, and so I put it on mugs, and I was trying to look for other things to do. And I was like, you know, I worked for, uh, you probably know him, Jerry Gladstone. He ran, oh, yeah. Yeah, so I worked for Jerry for a long time, and he would always tell me about how people loved memorabilia. Yes, they So did. I was like, man, let me go to mu movie producers and, and say if, if I can get my artwork or my products in their movies, then it become memorabilia. Right. And so I would go on sets and they say, hey, you know, I got these parts. I would go to these meetings for, you know, these networking events for movie production. And I would meet these producers and casting directors and say, hey, can I get my products in? And they're like, yes, we'll put it in. And then they would come to me later and say, you know, we got a role for you. And this is how I started acting. And when I met... Juan uh, Vasquez, who directed um, oh, yeah, Rise Juan of the Hustler, Vasquez, yeah. yeah, he directed that, and he directed um, Through the Valley with Danny Trejo, which is a classic movie, and right. the movie now that's on Amazon Prime, which is uh, The Squad: Rise of the Chicano Squad. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, but when I met Juan, he came to my fashion show in Palm Beach Swim Week. I gave him front row. He was with uh, with this guy Trey, and it was several other people that he was with that were visiting from Houston. Right. So we, we developed a friendship. He's from a similar part of Chicago, but he lived in, in uh, Wisconsin. So not too far away. We were still neighbors. But, you know, we had such a familiar history, we became friends. Now, in the time, I was shooting this movie. Uh, after, after the show, I was shooting this movie called Crossing the Line. Mm -hmm. And I had never discussed it with Juan because it wasn't like I was telling people, hey, I'm an actor. Yeah, everybody knew me as an artist, fashion designer. And so... Right. Um, I, the movie ends up going on Amazon Prime, and I didn't know it was going to end up there. I get a call from the director, John Vargas, who was filming Negativity. John Vargas, yep. Yes, and he tells me, hey, I, I got an actor in the movie whose face is on a poster in Amazon Prime. And I'm like, no way, who'd you get? You know, I'm excited <laughs> for him. And he goes, what are you talking about, you? And I go, me? And he goes, bro, go on Amazon Prime. <laughs> 
And I, you know, listen, I, I got to admit, I don't know how to use my own TV. So I get my son, hey, can you get this thing to work for me? He turns it on and there I am. My face was next to Joaquin Phoenix and Joker. There was my face. Oh, so I was like. He's crazy. Joaquin yeah, Phoenix. Oh, what Let's a film. Let's not discuss him. But that <laughs> film, he was phenomenal in. Well, he was phenomenal. He was. Yeah. So I called Juan, you know, because he and I, this was four years of friendship. I go, bro, I got to tell you a crazy story. And I tell him the story, he goes, wait a minute, you're an actor? And I go, no, I just did this movie. And he goes, no, 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 I got a role for you. He goes, I want you to co-star with me in the squad. And that's how I got that role. Excellent. That's <laughs> see, we see Max over here is actually head of the Roman Empire. Okay? <laughs> okay. They were supposed to put him in Gladiator 2. I don't know why. So now you're going to want to become an actor. I All right. Well, I'll have to introduce you to Juan. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be, exactly. Right. The guy can direct. <laughs> he can direct. But, you know, it's so funny because... Uh, many years ago when I was uh, working on a regular job but I was you know doing things on the side because you know mm -hmm. you, you still got to work and bring money in and you still want to get a career I met this woman and I heard her talking and I said to myself I said she sounds like she knows somebody so the girl at the next desk said to me you don't know who she is I said no I said, it's Marguerite Mathis said, oh wow Marguerite Mathis I said, wait a minute is there a connection she says that's Johnny Mathis's sister I said, Okay, now my wheels are turning. Yeah. So I didn't say anything, and then her and I became friends. She said, I heard you were a singer. I said, yeah. I said, and but I still didn't let her know that I knew. She said, well, why don't you come with me? She said, to see one of the shows in Atlantic City. I said, okay. I said, who are we going to see? And she looked at me. She said, are you playing stupid, or do you know? I said, no, I said, I didn't want to let the cat out of the bag. I said, I know who your brother is. I said, it's Johnny Mathis. Mm. I said, but I don't like to flaunt things like right. that. So she said to me, no, I like you for that. So she takes me there and she said, now we're going to go backstage. She said, don't go crazy. I said, no, I said, I won't. Mm. So I'm sitting, like where, where you're sitting now, and I'm looking and I see this guy looking at me through a mirror. I'm saying, nah, that's not Johnny. <laughs> I'm saying, that's got to be somebody else. And the guy that used to do his hair, Kalani, looked just like it. I'm saying to myself, that's probably the hairstylist. This guy all of a sudden comes out, comes up to me, reaches his hand, goes like this. And I said, hi, how are you? I still didn't think it's... He said, I'm Johnny Mathis. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. I said, and then I introduced myself. Well, when he decided to come, they did a, an album, okay, called uh, The Hollywood uh, Musicals. They took all the old music and kind of revived it, okay? Oh, okay. They did it with Henry Mancini. So his sister said to me, look, she's John's over at Tower Records. She said, on Friday, you want to go over there? I said, yeah. I said, I happen to be off on Friday. She said, yeah, let's go over there. They're going to go to lunch. I walk in the Tower Records. John's over there signing autographs. He sees me walking and he says, that's it. I'm done <laughs> for the day. And his sister's looking at him. She said, wait a minute, you still got people on. He said, Angela's here. <laughs> so, and she's the one who's like, wait a minute, I brought her. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So she, now she's getting mad at me. And he says to me, he, he always had a way of talking. He says, come on, darling, let's go. I said, where are we going? He says, my limo's out there. I said, well, where are we going? He says, Il Malostrillo for lunch, Italian restaurant. Sister says, what about me? He says, go in the other limo. He says, yeah, I, him and I in the limousine. We go to Il Malostrillo. Now, normally, John would sit at the head of the table and some is produced with it. No, he sat at the head of the table and that was me. Oh, okay, wow. Okay, so I don't know what this connection ever was. <laughs> he liked your energy. He was like, I gotta I have her know. with he me. Like, yeah, he liked my energy or something, but I mean, it, it was unbelievable, okay? And just to kind of listen to the music that mm -hmm. he did was, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, in that album they put out, the Hollywood musicals was great, and then they were doing a show at Carnegie Hall, which I went to see, and to see two wow. legends on stage. Okay, you got Henry Mancini just to be at Carnegie John, Hall. and Johnny Mathis. <laughs> oh, just to be sitting in Carnegie yeah. Hall was unbelievable. But it's so funny because I had a great rapport with John, okay? Mm. And um, there was times that I would vocalize with him backstage, and um, he kind of moved on to something else, but they were trying to get the two of us to actually do something together because when he heard me sing, he was like, whoa. Wow. He said, I didn't know. I said, no, I said, I don't brag about it. I said, but, you know. And then my crazy cousin, who I still want to beat up, <laughs> I love him dearly, he goes and he opens up for him one night in Atlantic City. I said, 
you opened up from? I said, oh, wow. You're not talking about that. But it was just the area that we lived in. Yeah. Yeah. That we were able to get involved with that. Okay? That's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. And the fact that, you know, we got to meet celebrities like that. And, and a lot of times we weren't even looking for the big money. Right. Whenever we got paid, we figured, you know, hey, if we could just be around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the love of the craft, the love of the art, the, the fun that it, you know, a lot of people don't know how much fun it is when you go to these different events that are it people is. Are, It's just a lot of fun. You meet such cool people. You know, you get to get involved with so many cool projects, and and, I, and I've been a part of so many that I'm like, I it's like I look back at sometimes I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> exactly, and it's so funny when I don't know what it was when I'm coming down here and I'm listening to Louis Prima, Just a Gigolo. I'm just, I don't know why, and I told this to him. I said, every, Joe, every time I hear that song, I think of Joe Rubo, <laughs> and I think about him being a casino boss. Mm -hmm. If they remade the movie Casino. Joe's got to be part oh, of it. Oh, yeah. he's got to be part of that. He could be Joe Pesci's part. Yes, part. he could. I was thinking about that the other day. I said, that's Joe Rubo, because they had that yeah. movie on. I said, that's Joe. Yeah. I said, he could play that part perfect. He totally could. He totally he could. Told, I said, I wish they would remake that movie that's set you know, in there. It's funny. He's in Rise of the Hustler. Yes, he As is. an FBI agent. <laughs> I mean... Of all people to get an FBI, but he did it. He did the role he really good. Perfect. He yeah. did it perfect. But it was just funny when I told him, I go, "So you're an FBI agent?" He was like, "Really?" <laughs> I was like, "Yes, yeah, it's the part you got, man." It, but but it, he did it. Yeah, he's good. And yeah. the thing is, when you get him in front of the camera, oh yeah, yeah, he's great. He flips a switch, and it's like, oh wow, that's not Joe Rubo anymore. That is, that was detective, you know, or yeah, agent, whatever. Could, like, yeah, you're right. He does yeah. flip the switch. He could play any part. Yeah. I, you could probably see him in Gladiator playing Russell Crowe's part. He played that <laughs> perfect. I'm like, yeah. this guy is unbelievable. His facial expressions, his is the way he carries himself. It just, it, he just works. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just works. And and the thing is, is he's got the personality. He does. People gravitate to him. Okay. And when he was telling me the other day at your event, he says, I got to get, I'm going to get VIP back. I said, Joe, you got to get it back. Yeah. I said because I did notice one thing, since he did not have that. I mean, even Adrian from Transmedia yeah. said the same thing. She said, you know, we lost a lot of good contacts. I said, you're right. I said, because Joe was bringing on a lot of people. Yes. A lot of influential people. So I said, when when we didn't have him doing the shows, we kind of lost something. You know, and that was the thing. Like, I went to all the VIP TV networking events. I did too, um, yeah. I went, do you remember Johnny Mars with Mars Management on the Audio oh, yeah. Vision Studios? Yeah. He had the uh, execs and talents um, events that they were doing. Right. And then for after COVID for a while, it was just, there was nothing. No, that's what happened. It was like everything stopped. And I actually had that conversation with John Vargas, the director of Negativity. And um, I said, man, I said, you know, I, I did so much and accomplished so much through networking events. We need to bring them back. And so that's why I decided to bring back, bring bring up the art of networking. Yes. You know, yes. because I, I named it that being an artist and I felt like as an artist to be able to accomplish what I accomplished. And then networking itself, there is an art to that. And I there tell is. people there's a real art to going up to people, you know, because you have to, number one, after you're at a networking event, you have to get completely out of your comfort zone. And, you, you know, and I tell people the secret for me, and this is my secret, and you probably, anyone who's been to a networking event with me will recognize this. I walk up and I say, hi, my name is Kenny. I'm an artist, fashion designer, and actor. What's your name? What do you do? Right. I've given them the information I want them to have about me. Now I'm going to collect on them, you know, and, and so one of the things that I did was I, I would, as I was meeting people in these events, I would listen to everything they told me. And if there was somebody I met down the line that I knew I can put these people together, they I do might, that too. I'm like, hey, did you meet exactly. this person? Let me bring you to them. You know, sometimes I feel that I have gotten, I've accomplished more being selfless, trying to help other people than trying to go out there and just push myself. Right, exactly. And uh, Max, what does our fearless leader say, Al Otero? If you're not networking, you're not working. That's right. Okay? <laughs> so that's the whole thing. You've got to network. So I think we got to bring the old gang back. Yes. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do a show back with you again and Joe here. Yeah, we'll bring Joe. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring Joe. And uh, uh, Max likes to hear uh, the mafia story, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Joe's got plenty of them. Joe's got plenty of them. So we'll bring the whole Maybe we get mobile mic up here. And, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it'll be crazy. But anyway, um, we only have a few minutes left, so 
Any last words you want to tell our viewers? Um, I'm gonna tell you this: there's nothing you can't accomplish. You got to work hard in it. You got to sacrifice. Put your work in; it's worth it. If you've been doing it for a few years and you feel like you're running out of gas, don't worry. There's plenty of gas stations along the way. You can refill your energy. Keep going. Don't give up. Especially when you feel like you're hitting a wall. That's the best time to figure out whether you're not gonna you're gonna build a ladder to get over that wall, or get a shovel to go under it, or get a sledgehammer and go through it. Create your doorways. You can do it. There's nothing you can't do, and I'm living proof. If you look at everything. I've done exactly great words for our viewers and I'm the same way I'm living proof you know uh, you take a lot of different channels in life uh, you know you try to reach those high points but you're gonna hit some rocky roads and I remember what my uncle Tony used to say life is is a bowl of cherries he said, but you got to get through that dirt first yeah a few little pits and when you get over that everything will be uh, copacetic absolutely so but anyway i want to thank you for being part of make our thank world you. your runway you always have an open invitation to come back and uh, ladies and gentlemen we're going to have more exciting stories for you as the week goes on of course you know i'll be doing something my pageant's coming up so we'll be going live on margaritaville but when i get back sky's the limit and we'll be here with when i tell you las vegas style shows Woo. so get ready copacabana las vegas New York, we're going to have it all. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to Make Our World Your Runway. And stay tuned because we always have something very exciting for you. Have thank you so weekend. much for having me.